This is a mechanism of disease map for miscarriage, also known as spontaneous abortion. I'll be talking about the etiology, the definition, and the manifestations of miscarriage. As in all of these maps, the color coding is listed in the top right of the slide, and I'll be talking through each of these boxes one by one as we repopulate the flowchart. Let's go ahead and get started with the definition of miscarriage. A miscarriage, also known as a spontaneous abortion, also known as an early pregnancy loss, is defined as a loss of pregnancy before 20 weeks gestation. Now in contrast, if you have a loss of pregnancy after 20 weeks gestation, that's called a stillbirth. But what we're talking about here is loss of pregnancy before 20 weeks gestation, also called early pregnancy loss, or miscarriage, or spontaneous abortion. Now we're going to jump right into the manifestations, because there are a few manifestations of spontaneous abortion. And I've listed the different subtypes here. So we have threatened abortion, inevitable abortion, incomplete abortion, complete abortion, and missed abortion. For each of these, we'll see a picture of the uterus. We'll have a signal for the fetal activity, if the fetus is still alive or not. We'll have a diagram for the cervical os, if the os is dilated or not. And we'll have a little red coloration for uterine bleeding, if any, and we'll see a picture of the products of conception to see if the fetus is still in the uterus, on its way out of the uterus, or completely out of the uterus. So let's go ahead and get started with threatened abortion. Threatened abortion is exactly what it sounds like. The abortion is threatening to happen. So the products of conception have not yet been expelled. They are still intrauterine. The cervical os is not yet dilated, and there's still fetal activity. So the fetus is still alive, and this is the only one that's a reversible process. We'll see that all of these other subtypes are irreversible. But in the threatened abortion, the baby is still alive, it still has activity, there's no dilation of the cervical os, and it's possible that the fetus survives this incident. A little bit worse is inevitable abortion. In this case, the abortion is inevitable, as the name implies. The cervical os has dilated, the products of conception are now visible and palpable, in the uterus on its way out. There's still, of course, uterine bleeding, manifesting as vaginal bleeding to the patient. This is now an irreversible process, and the fetus can either be alive or dead in, in inevitable abortion. Next is incomplete abortion. This is kind of one step further. The products of conception are now on their way out. They are either in the cervical canal or just at the very end of the uterus. The cervical os is, of course, still open as the products of conception are making their way out. There is definitely no fetal activity, and again, this is irreversible. Complete abortion is kind of what you would expect to happen next once the products of conception have been expelled. So products of conception are now extra uterine. We don't see them on the diagram at all. You do still have some residual vaginal bleeding coming from the uterus. The os has now closed once it has expelled the products of conception, and of course this is irreversible. The fetal, um, the, the fetus itself has perished and um, there's just a little bit of residual bleeding, otherwise it's a normal exam with no fetus. Now if you aren't able to expel the fetus, you kind of jump from these stages to missed abortion. So in missed abortion, you have the products of, of, of conception still inside the uterus. They're still intrauterine. They have not been expelled. The bleeding has stopped. The bleeding, bleeding has slowed and then stopped. And the os has closed. So on speculum exam, it looks quite normal. You have no bleeding and you have a closed cervical os. Unfortunately, the fetus has perished, so you will not notice any fetal activity when you try to detect the heartbeat. And there will no longer be any bleeding. So this is almost as if the fetus has missed its chance to be aborted. The fetus has missed the opening of the cervix. So <clears throat> this, this fetus will stay inside the uterus and will need to be extracted um, by, by an ob doctor. Now you can kind of get a read for these things, the fetal activity, the cervical os, by doing these tests and imaging. So the first thing you'll do is a pelvic exam. This will help you visualize the cervix and see whether or not you have vaginal bleeding. Oftentimes when patients present with vaginal bleeding, you need to confirm that that bleeding is coming from the uterus and not just from the mucosa of the vagina. Next, you'll do your imaging. You could do a transvaginal ultrasound. This will, again, confirm your uterine bleeding, make sure the bleeding is actually coming from inside the uterus. This will also help you assess for fetal cardiac motion, and you'll be able to see if there are any abnormalities of the yolk or gestational sac. You'll also do blood tests for the mom. The mom's beta-HCG um, should be increasing in early pregnancy, and if it's downtrending, then that's a bad sign. That's a sign of miscarriage or spontaneous abortion. So now that we've gone through the definition and the manifestations of miscarriage, let's talk about the varied etiologies. And there are many things that can cause a miscarriage and spontaneous abortion. It's actually quite common. And uh, I feel like there's a bit of a stigma to talk about miscarriages 
but um, knowing how common miscarriages are can be reassuring to women who have miscarriages. We've categorized the etiologies by these groupings here, and that'll help us keep them straight as we make a differential diagnosis and try to assess why a woman might have had a miscarriage. The first, uh, maybe the most rare, is abnormal maternal reproductive organs. So there are many things that could be wrong with mom's reproductive organs that led the pregnancy to fail. Septate uterus is one, uterine leiomyomas, that's just like fibroids, uterine adhesions, sometimes this happens from previous infections in the uterus or perhaps previous surgical procedures in the uterus, cervical incompetence. This might happen um, also from previous infections, previous um, surgical processes in the uterus as well. Next, the mom can have systemic diseases that predisposes her to miscarriages, diabetes mellitus, hyperthyroidism, hypothyroidism, infections, systemic infections like sepsis can of course predispose to miscarriage, some hypercoagulative processes, and I've labeled this as um, as inflammation because one of the most common causes of uh, miscarriages in women is antiphospholipid syndrome. It's a clotting disorder and it's inflammatory in nature. So that could be a maternal systemic disease that causes miscarriages. Next, fetoplacental problems, essentially problems with the, pla with the placenta or with baby itself. In the vast, in the, the biggest group of cases, the biggest cause of miscarriages is chromosomal abnormalities. So of course we know about trisomy 21 and that's a chromosomal abnormality that's not fatal, that's Down syndrome and babies can survive and live uh, quite a long life with that chromosomal abnormality. But there are many other chromosomes that can go wrong and can um, not split, can do a non-disjunction during meiosis, and that can cause a miscarriage as, as well. And a lot of times we don't know what these are. Um, they are not detected. They just are manifested as a miscarriage or spontaneous abortion. So this is probably the most common on my list here. Up to 50% of miscarriages can be caused by chromosomal abnormalities. Next, chromosomal, or, sorry, congenital anomalies can also cause a miscarriage, and you can have an anembryonic pregnancy. This is when you have a gestational sac, but there's no embryo, there's no pole inside that, uh, that gestational sac. So it's almost like you're, you're, you have all the ingredients to have a pregnancy, but there's actually no fetus inside the gestational sac. Next, a few miscellaneous causes of miscarriage. Trauma can, of course, cause a miscarriage. Maternal smoking and or drugs. This should actually be blue in color. I'll have to fix that for the thumbnail. And some iatrogenic procedures like chorionic villus sampling and amniocentesis. We don't do these too much anymore because they can cause miscarriage. Now, we have all these etiologies, but unfortunately, a lot of miscarriages happen and we don't know why. So another big group that's worth mentioning is the unknown category. So this should, this is another mistake here, this should say um, idiopathic or unknown. So that'll be fixed also for the thumbnail. So hopefully this review of miscarriages was helpful and thank you for listening.